Hi, I'm Margie with Flow Motion Education, and in this video we're going to be exploring optimal foot supination mechanics, or the mechanics of moving your, propelling your mass forward and off the foot. If you haven't already, please make sure that you've watched my pronation supination video before watching this one so you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to demo this exercise both side profile and facing you, and I'm going to request that if you send me a check-in video that you use the same camera angles that I'm using to demo the exercise. We're going to be in that same lunge position that we've been in for other exercises, but in this case, we've previously been pretty much focused on the front foot. We are now shifting our focus to the back foot. And just to remind you, a fully supinated foot is a rigid lever in order to propel the mass of your body forward. I'm gonna have a couple of rules. And rule number one is your big toe ball or knuckle and little toe ball or knuckle must stay in contact. We're going to have wedges under them or washcloths if you don't have wedges. Fold your washcloth about two or three deep. Your big toe ball and little toe ball or knuckle, big toe knuckle, little toe knuckle must stay in contact with your wedges or washcloths. Rule number two is and I highly recommend, as all of my exercises, specificity is paramount in this body of work. Highly recommend that you do these in front of a mirror and you watch yourself for the various things that I tell you to look out for. So uh, I want your feet as if parallel, as if they were on railroad tracks. Once we start doing the exercise, the temptation, and I mention this because I see this in everybody, including myself, that's why a mirror is really important. Once we start doing the exercise, the temptation is going to be to pivot the back foot. But I really need for this exercise to work for your feet to be parallel as if you're on railroad tracks. And I want to say something also in this particular exercise about my stride length and stride width. So my stride width is how wide the distance between my feet is. And this exercise is actually... It's, I'm not crossing over, but it's not a wide stance, split stance. It's actually really sort of as if you were taking a step forward. So notice I'm not way out here. That really throws people off. I'm not crossing over either. I'm just, it's really the width of a natural step. However, the length on this exercise is slightly long. It's, we're not doing a huge warrior pose, but it's, slightly longer than a natural step. And once you start doing it, you'll find your Goldilocks place where you're not too long, but you are long and your length, your stride length is long enough. You just play with it. If you're really, really wobbly, try lengthening it or shortening it. See what happens. One, one will help. You can also have a chair next to you as usual, no white knuckle grip, you get a one finger touch. I'm going to take my narrower wedges or washcloths, folded two to three deep, and I'm going to place one under the little toe ball and one under the big toe ball. And remember the rule, foot is parallel like it's on a railroad track, and at all times I do not, I never lose contact with the big toe ball and little toe ball. So in my split stance, Move number one is going to be simply lift the heel as high as you can, maintaining contact with the first and fifth. Oh, I forgot to mention, I am in a slight bend in the front knee. So the front knee is in a bend, back knee is straight, and first just practice lift the heel and lower. And lift and kind of play with how high can I lift, maintaining that contact with first and fifth. Lift and lower. And then just after you've done a few, just notice how when you lift the heel, it not only elevates you up, but it also pushes you forward onto the front foot because that's what this supination is all about, moving your mass forward, propelling you forward. So just notice how when you lift the heel, instead of thinking up now, just really amplify the 
forward component of lifting the back heel. And it doesn't even have to go all the way down. Lift, let it bring your mass forward so that you're really on top of the front foot. First and fifth are glued to your wedges or washcloths, whichever you're using. So we will do that a few times, and let's see if we can actually lose completely the up component. That is just to kind of help you figure out where you're move that you're lifting the heel, that that's how the movement initiates. But I want you to lift the heel and think of your heel as arcing up and forward the back of the heel. And that will amplify the forward motion that is generated by lifting the heel as opposed to the up. So let's try to lose the up and forward and just see if we can establish I'm coming forward. I'm traveling my center of mass off the back foot onto the front foot. My back foot is parallel like it's on a railroad track and at all times first and fifth are hugging the wedges. I, I want you to feel contact with one and five even if your heel doesn't come up that high. One and five is more important than the height of your heel. Now I'm going to do the rest of the exercise facing you. So again, my wedges are under first toe ball and fifth toe ball. I need to back up here. I'm going to come into my lunge. My stride width is not that wide. My length is a little bit longer than a normal footstep. I'm going to do the up just to establish the sense of my heel lifting and actually the motion is coming from the toe joints. That's where I'm moving. And I'm going to allow the heel lift to move me forward instead of up. So I'm amplifying the forward push that comes from lifting my heel. Think of my heel as arcing up and forward. The trajectory of the back of my heel is up and forward. It's arcing forward. On your next iteration, come forward, stop there. Remembering the back foot's on a railroad track and one in five toe balls are glued to the wedges. And then I'm going to ask you to, you can have a chair next to you if you need, if you're getting really wobbly, have a chair next to you with a one finger touch. I'm going to ask you to Rotate your pelvis toward the back foot. You can rotate the whole upper body, but this is where your foot is going to really want to pivot. As I, It's going to want to pivot as I rotate, but I, it doesn't get to pivot. It, it, this is really critical. And you're going to want to lose contact with the first. Don't lose contact with the first toe ball. So we're going to bring our mass forward, lifting the heel of the back foot. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the back of the back knee, this is a weird cue, but just go with it, and send it back, really straightening that back knee. Then we're going to take the opposite side of the pelvis, so the working leg is the back leg, so we're going to take the opposite side of the pelvis and rotate it toward the back leg, but the back foot does not get to pivot at all and I'm keeping one and five on the ground. So I'm getting like a, a kind of a twist in my foot. There's a lot of torque within the foot. If your ankle starts doing this, it tells me that your big toe ball is not gluing, glued to the wedge. There's no way if you maintain contact with the big toe ball and you don't pivot at all, you really are there glued to the wedges, there's no way you're gonna shift your weight into that vulnerable ankle sprain position. I'm going to do a close-up, but I'm going to show you here first. What I want you to notice is as I bring my mass forward by lifting the heel of the back foot, and then I send the back of the back knee back toward the wall behind me, you probably can't see my heel. I'm going to move this foot just for this video, this part of the video, so my heel is, is, uh, will be visible in a minute. Okay, so you probably can't see it, but watch what happens when I rotate my body, upper body, take this, this side of the pelvis, the opposite side of the working leg, and rotate it toward the working leg. We can do those little reaches. And if I keep big toe ball and little toe ball on the wedges and I don't pivot the foot, I keep it on that parallel railroad track, 
You can see my heel. Now you can't. Rotate, you can see it. Now you can't. Rotate, you can see my heel. Now you can't. Again, I'm doing it with my foot here just to get it out of the way, but normally I'd be in a narrower split stance. Okay, so here's my close-up of my foot in full supination. So again, my wedges go one under the big toe ball, one under the little toe ball. I'm going to take a fairly long split stance, uh, longer than a normal step. And I'm going to just lift and lower the heel. Now, if my, if my ankle does that, that tells me I'm losing contact with the big toe ball, so I'm going to maintain contact with the big and little toe balls. As I lift the heel, it moves my mass forward on top of the front foot. Do that a few times, and then stay there, take the back of the back knee, tap it even, so that's where it is, the back of my back knee, and send it behind back. Like, to me, I'm sending it to the wall behind me. From there, I'm going to... Uh, make sure my back foot is like on a railroad track and that I'm maintaining contact with the first and fifth. And I'm going to rotate my pelvis. And now you see, because I'm maintaining contact with first and fifth, that my heel comes into view. And then I derotate the pelvis, lower the heel. Lift the heel, moving my mass forward. Send the back of the back knee back, gluing my first and fifth I'm going to reposition just a little. Gluing my first and fifth to the wedges. So I only lift my heel as high as I can, maintaining contact. I'm going to rotate the upper body toward the back foot. My heel now comes into view. My foot is twisting. It should feel like, oh, yeah, I feel some something happening there. And um, while you're learning, it's okay to hold, but really the exercise has no holds. We bring our mass forward forward, we send the knee back, we rotate, we derotate, and we come out of it. So please make sure I see side profile and front profile. I don't need a close-up of your foot uh, if you send me a check-in video. Thank you.